welcome to the latest episode of Auction Property Hunters and you are joined as always by myself, Jay Howard, Piot Ruzanek, Omar Mehmet and Safe Dursey. For those of you who don't know us, um, we are all in the auction world, whether it is trading, whether it is financing, whether it's developing, whatever it is, we are your go-to place, all things auction. And today we're going to be talking about some properties coming up for sale. I am Jay Howard. I am the co-founder of Hammered Auctions, the Auction Buyers Club, and the co-author to Before the Hammer Falls. Um, we have also facilitated the sales of over £700 million worth of property at auction, and we trade ourselves. Hi guys, my name is Safe Dersey. I am a property trader, and we do a lot of auction trading, whether it's buying and selling. I've bought and sold over 220 properties in the last seven years now, and I love all things property auctions. I'm Omer Mehmet, uh, founder of Trinity Finance, which is a mortgage brokerage in Kent. Um, I'm also an auction trader um, and I do a bit of property development on the side. My name is uh, Piotr Rusinek and I'm the co-founder of Hammered Auctions, uh, Auction Vice Club and co-author of this book, Before the Hammer Falls, uh, with Jay Howard. And uh, we buy and sell properties in auctions and help people buy and sell. Today on Property Auction hunters we are going to be talking about a deal that safe has found at auction and we'll be playing a game called deal or no deal safe take it away yeah so today we're going to be looking at a pair of semi-detached houses going into all sub auctions and it's going in on the 18th of december 2023 as we speak uh today so the reason why these properties specifically caught my eye is it's a pair number one and they're all being sold as one lot so for me, that kind of rules out a lot of your, what we call owner occupiers usually, because you don't have many owner occupiers that buy two properties and one go at auction. And um, it also rules out sometimes a few investors as well, because they don't really like to be picking up two properties in one go. So generally speaking, I'm always looking for something that has a bit of an angle and puts a lot of people off for whatever reason. And this is one of them. Now, the other biggest thing is one of the properties is actually fire damaged. And if you go into the photo, you'll see kind of the extent of the fire damage. So some people don't really understand and know how to handle fire damage properties. Some people stay away from it. But generally speaking, from my sort of experience in the auction world, fire damage properties sell really, really well at auction, especially if they're guided quite well. So for me, I'm looking at how can I take a guide property, whatever you want to call it really, a lot where it's really closed off from quite a lot of buyers how can I then do a title split potentially for it and then be able to open it up to much more buyers? So the biggest thing being that the guide price was not as attractive to buyers as it was attractive to me. And I'll explain the reason why behind that. So I'm trying to stay away from properties that are usually priced really, really well because properties that price quite keenly tend to attract so many more buyers into the market to view it, to read the legal pack, to bid on it and all the rest of it. This property was priced, what I would say is quite realistically but at the same time it wasn't what we call price baiting so it wasn't priced at a point where there's going to have loads of interest in my opinion i think this property could potentially go unsold and i think this could be picked up post auction in my opinion that's where i think really the value is so for me i was just looking at the property from a point of view of maybe looking at buying it splitting the titles on it and then putting it into two different auctions on two different days and then that would be the best way to be able to kind of trade that property on because as a trader, that's what I'm looking at first and foremost. I'm looking at how can I trade that property on first before I look at any other exits on that property. So for me, the trading exit is, is the most important thing. It is Devon. It's quite it's quite a, a, a bubbly area. There's there's lots of different buyers for things, whether it's an investment, whether it's owner occupier stock, etc. So there's going to be lots of buyers for this. It could be a developer. It could be a a builder. So it's really really open because obviously it's vacant. And from my point of view, this is something that. I think could be traded quite well, especially if it goes um, if it goes unsold post auction. So, over to you, Omar. What do you think of the property? Um, yeah, I think it's um, definitely an opportunity for the right buyer. I think you've summed it up quite well. There's lots of people that wouldn't be interested in this because ultimately, you know, the owner occupier, first time buyer, someone looking for a small refer project is not going to be interested in buying two houses. Um, I think the fire damage, like you said, would put quite a lot of people off. I mean, the extent of the fire damage is until you view it, you're not really going to know exactly how much fire damage is there. But from the external photos, if they are current and up to date, it appears the roof is still in quite good condition or perhaps the fire hasn't gone through to the roof. But I think 
if I was looking to buy this, I would want to know exactly how much fire damage there is and would I need to change all of the rafters in the roof and are all the ceiling joists intact? You know, how much of the internal plaster has been damaged? Does it need completely rewiring? That type of stuff. And although one route would be to split this and uh, to trade it back up at auction, the other potential option is to split title split this and sell it on the open market and maybe fix the fire damage to open it up to um, um you know much wider pool of potential first time buyers or homeowners so yeah it's certainly an interesting one if it could be picked up at the right price um, so uh, from what i can see this property has been initially offered with a much more um like attractive guide price uh, so as over here on the right move, it says that it was listed on the 23rd of November at guide of 260. And the guide was actually increased to 280 on uh, 12th of December. So that's actually today. Um, and I think those kind of moves uh, suggest normally there's quite a bit of interest in the property. And uh, this is a housing association selling it. And uh, they're kind of uh, going with, oh, we don't want to risk this selling for 260. And I don't know why they would increase it because it's not a great move. If there's a lot of interest, this will sell well. Um, and increasing the guide price is never really a, a great kind of move. So um, I am curious. I think it because it's a housing association selling us, they typically list properties at quite cheap prices. I can see that in this area. Um, house prices are about 350 for a semi. I mean, some of them go for 250 uh, but I, I think a 350 for a done up semi detached house is about right, which makes this quite an attractive purchase. Uh, if you can deal with that fire damage element and put the properties on the open market, um, kind of done up. So as a trader, I, I think you might struggle to make enough margin buying it or, or competing with people who actually gonna live in the property and do it up uh, themselves and then maybe sell them the other one. Also my thoughts. It's going to sound really bad, just kind of summarizing the great points that Piot and Omer have said. But I mean, it, 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 on the very face of it, it's screaming out to, you know, separate the two off, tart them up, and then sell them onto the open market. Because in, in this kind of situation, if you are buying it cheap enough, um, then even if there was a trade profit in there, you're going to be making more money by being able to bring it to the market and get end user owner occupiers in there. Um, so if you can facilitate that, I think this is a really good deal. Yeah, just to add on that point. So I've bought a fire damage property previously where it had a lot of superficial damage, let's say. So not so much fire damage in terms of the actual infrastructure of the property itself. So as Omar was saying, it wasn't the rafters and Obviously, the joists and stuff, they're all fully intact. It was more, it just looked all black. So it was just that, what they would call black soot, basically, which is quite hard to, to remove, but it is removable. And I think this property is exactly the same. If you look at the infrastructure of the building itself and the property, you can look at all the photos, Piot, um, and go through them. It actually isn't as bad condition as people would think it's in, just based on, obviously, purely just judging from the photos, not judging from actually going to see it. Um, so we bought a property... We basically literally just whitewashed it. So we spent not more than £2,000, maybe even less than that, just whitewashing the whole property and then put it back straight into auction. And it just attracted a much bigger audience of buyers for that because they didn't think they were going to have to pay as much doing the renovation, if that makes sense. So that's why I think this could have an angle to trade where we're not necessarily doing all the works to basically refurbish it. And if you look at it very closely, it's actually not as bad as it looks, if that makes sense. I mean, even the electric um, sort of meters and obviously all of the kind of electric box is all intact as well. So generally speaking, I think it's um, it's one that from my perspective, I think could be traded quite well, as long as, as I said, titles need to be split. They need to go into the right auctions. We are coming to December as well. I actually personally think from my perspective, the housing association hasn't got enough interest on this thinking that they need to put the guide price up just in case. And I think, personally, this could go unsold, even though this could be quite a controversial thing to say, just knowing that housing associations are the way they work. But that's just my opinion and my gut feel. So, yeah. 
Raven, so are you saying say if there's uh, no deal at guide price, but deal at a lower price? I think I think sub 260, there's a deal to be had from a trading point of view. This is purely trading. Sub mm -hmm. 300, there's a deal to be done from a flipping point of view. Above 300, I don't think there's a deal to be done. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> Brilliant. Well, I think uh, just looking at the numbers briefly and without doing much of what it says, I think there is, there is a deal to be done there. And uh, I think someone is going to buy this and they will pay 320 for it. Okay. Are there guesses, guys? Yeah, I think this one will sell. And I think you're probably, I, I think 300 to 320 is probably where it's going to settle. I think uh, uh, there are enough people out there that whether they think the fire damage is superficial or not, they're going to look at that title split and think, worst case scenario, I'll do all the work and, and I'll exit it to the open market. So I think it will find its feet. Uh, yeah, this is a deal from me. I think um, my, my route would be tarting up and exiting to the open market. Um, and that's where I think there'll be a good level of margin. Although I don't dismiss trading it for very quick profit. Um, but I think the real money would be to be made at guide or picking this up after auction. And I wouldn't be wanting to get into uh, competition with all the other um, potential buyers bidding on this. So it's a deal under guide price from me brilliant i think that really summarizes that uh I, I think from trading perspective we need to look at values very differently than from flipping perspective um i still think a lot of properties actually sell to people who have um like are not necessarily traders although right now in the auctions market there is way more professional buyers than opportunistic buyers so this is actually uh like a possible really cheap kind of purchase um depending how things go on the day of the auction and also there's a massive catalog 200 properties on that day and or 250 and then another 250 full on the next week so a lot to pick from yeah i think timing is going to be key here if you remember the auction as of today's the 18th of october uh, the 18th of december now that means if you've got four weeks to complete on that, you've lost pretty much two to three weeks because all the solicitors are closed, your bridging lenders are closed. So it's going to be a very, very tight timescale for someone actually buying it on the day at, uh, on the 18th of December. So for me, I think timing is going to be a big thing. So in my perspective, the two arbitrage opportunities is timing. If you can pick this up in December and then split the titles and put one maybe in February, maybe in March, maybe in April, that kind of timing, that, that could be a bit of a timing arbitrage. But the second arbitrage is basically making it more affordable for people to buy by splitting the titles and also potentially removing the potential risk for a lot of buyers from fire damage as well. So I think if you can work those three angles, there's a bit of a trading angle there from my perspective. Brilliant. Well, that's a wrap. Uh, let's see how things are going to go and we'll come back with uh, reviewing the results uh in the following weeks know in the comments um what you think it will sell for uh and obviously then praise whichever one us one of us got the right number the right result and don't forget to join us for the next one and don't forget to like share subscribe this as well <laughs>